What's up guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be watching a video that has been recommended to me and uh, when I saw it I, I just knew I had to, to watch it with you guys. So it's about the most iconic uh, uh, sandwich, I guess, that, sh that we have here in Portugal. Debatable. But uh, it's the first thing. It's more iconic here in the north of Portugal than it is in the rest of the country, but it's iconic non non nonetheless. So, before you think we're weird when you see the, the fucking thing, alright? We don't eat this every day, okay? It's not an everyday thing, okay? Don't think we're like obese. Obesity here in Portugal is actually rather low in comparison to the average in Europe, so we're, we're fine. This is like the, the pinnacle hangover meal. Like, if you have one of those really bad hangovers, you eat one of these, you're fucking golden. It's like a miracle. So that's when we do it. Or if you're really, really hungry, you eat, you eat one of these as well. So I want to see what they show, because usually whenever there's something showing a Francesinha, it's always, they always look like absolute dog shit, and nothing like a Francesinha actually looks like. So as someone from here, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see what it, what it looks like. Ham, cheese, mortadella, sausage, Ooh. steak, egg. All smothered in a tangy tomato sauce. This is the... Okay, I, I have to stop putting it there immediately. Uh, a tangy tomato sauce. I mean, imagine if I was describing the dish to you, right? And I said, oh, a francinho, it's a sandwich, it has steak, it has mortadella, it has cheese, blah, blah, blah. And it has tomato sauce. In your mind, immediately, you're going to think of something more like a lasagna because of the tomato sauce. This, this is not tomato sauce. Like, sure, there is tomato sauce in it. But there's other stuff like, for example, there's beer in that sauce. Uh, that's what usually gives it that orangey look rather than, you know, red, like a tomato sauce would have. There's also meats and some other stuff. There can be some alcoholic beverages other than beer, but it's usually beer. It depends on, like, what place you go to. It doesn't taste like alcohol. It doesn't taste like beer either. Like, when you eat it, you don't taste the beer. If you do taste the beer, then it's terribly made. <laughs> And if you do taste the tomato itself, it's terribly made as well. So it's kind of like a meaty sauce on a sandwich that's smothered in meat, but uh, that's besides the point. Also, if you're someone that calorie counts, don't eat it. Please, please don't. Nobody in a, res uh, in a restaurant will be like, oh, this has around uh, uh, b -b -b calories. Nobody's going to tell you that. But if you do a, an estimate calculation of like the calories that this monster has, it will be somewhere between, like, the whole thing that you see here, like that beer, the sandwich and the fries with the sauce and blah blah blah, that will set you at around 1,500 to 2,500, give or take, calories. So it's not... Uh, <laughs> don't eat this. Like, if you eat this more than twice a week, you're pushing it a little bit. Just once, once a week at best. And even then, probably don't eat it every week. That's a bad idea. Uh, let's continue. The Francesinha. Walk into any restaurant or cafe in Porto, Portugal, oh, and man. you're likely to see. And it's cheap as well, by the way. Ah, so a francinha é um. A dita que é uma sanduíche. As pessoas do Porto não gostam de comer sanduíche, porque é de facto bem mais do que isso. Yes. Never call a francesinha a sandwich, even though it technically is. Nobody here thinks of it as a sandwich because since it's a hot sandwich, and it's on a plate, and it's with a lot more stuff, it's more like a dish for us. Because you can put bread on a dish and not have it be a sandwich, but I guess, you know, stuff between two pieces of bread is a, sand a sandwich, but it's not really a sandwich. Also, that francesinha is a bit dry. You need a lot more sauce on that. So usually, if you go to Porto, like, you don't put sauce over the, the francesinha. You, you drench it. That's how it works. And so, usually in, in, in Porto, if you go eat the francesinha, at least the locals are always like that. And most places do that all, uh, anyway. They put the francesinha in, in front of you and they immediately bring like extra sauce. Ah oh, man. <laughs> I ate one recently, it was fucking best. Ah, oh, francesinha man. It's, uh, that francesinha looks good. I don't know why they put some meats on the, the outside, that's not really typical. Uh, usually the egg is also outside of the cheese, not inside, but sure. Because you want the egg to be outside so that when you cut it, it's just, you know. Uh, é naturalmente comida de faca e garfo, em, embora mm. uh, algumas vezes já houve quem tivesse tentado e até conseguido de alguma maneira comer à mão. 
Who the fuck eats a francesinha by hand? You're a dumbass. That's not how it works. Are you... Are you... Are you okay? Like, the whole... The, the, so the sauce is very hot. Like, not spicy. Hot, but hot. Also, Café Santiago. Uh, it's okay. I, 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 if I only see this as like a tourist trap, Café Santiago, to eat Francinha. I would recommend eating it everywhere else. It's better. Just my opinion. And most people in Porto think the same, so don't, yeah, you know. But it looks good. That one looks good. I wonder what people will say about this. Usually people Francis. are like, oh, it's a bit too heavy, it looks... then they like it. Dimi in Portuguese means little French lady. So, how did it become a local sensation? Yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah, Francesinha means a small French girl. Not like in age, like stature, I guess. So yeah, we, we like to eat eat little French ladies. I that doesn't sound good, but yeah, <laughs> there's a reason for that. I'll probably explain it. But it, it was an immigrant that went to France and came back to Portugal, and then he he pays this dish to a croque monsieur, except it has nothing to do with the croque monsieur. It's completely different, but. That, that was the, the, the inspiration, I guess. A Francinha apareceu no final dos anos 50, terá sido feita por Daniel Silva, um ex-imigrante português em França, okay. tendo vindo trabalhar para o Porto, nomeadamente para o restaurante da Regaleira, que hoje não existe mais, terá aí desenvolvido uma espécie de croque monsieur, à qual ele adicionou um molho picante. E na dificuldade de pronunciar croque monsieur, talvez as pessoas lhe tenham começado a chamar a pequena sanduíche francesa ou a Francinha. Today, every... Pequena. A.K.A. Okay, small. Uh, every restaurant in Porto you go, there's always that beautiful picture right there of Francesinha. Every restaurant, like if there's a restaurant in Porto that doesn't have Francesinha, you're, you're kind of like, ah, oh. you feel offended almost. Porto they have to have it. Has a slightly different Look at that. The Francesinha. Well, They're the all different. Have a favorite, Café Santiago. No, it isn't. It isn't the local's favorite. Fuck off. No, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. Porque é muito boa. É ótimo. É uma das melhores francesinhas do Porto. Vem aqui. Um... My hotel specifically recommended to come. First of all, you look at her accent and you can tell that she's not from Porto. So for her to say, oh, it's one of the best francesinhas in Porto, when she has a Lisbon accent. Lady, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking. You're not a local, man. I'm here to Cafe Santiago. They said it is the best francesinha and to try it if we wanted local food. Nah. There's so There's many better. different flavors throughout. It looks a little overwhelming, but once you cut into it, it's perfect. She knows what she's talking about. She's correct. It looks overwhelming, but then once you taste it, it's not as overwhelming as you may think because everything cuts each other very well. Like it's heavy, but for someone for something that is about 2,000 calories, it doesn't feel like you're eating 2,000 calories. It feels like you're eating 500 to 1,000 at best. It, it's Cafe just perfect. Santiago has three locations, one busier than the others. Nos prometeram que em meia hora seríamos atendidos. Achamos que vai valer a pena. A Francinha no Café Santiago é servida de modo muito fresco, com uma quantidade de, de francinhas que nós servimos por dia. É bastante elevado, isso leva-nos a ter que fazer uma pré-preparação uhum. antes de levar propriamente a grelhar. Essa preparação consiste em fazer o corte das carnes, o corte do queijo, da mortadela do fiambre, em fazer o tratamento do pão Beautiful. e depois é construída a base da francinha, que é a base do pão, com uma fatia de mortadela, mm. duas partes de salsa fresca e uma mm -mm. parte de linguiça. By the way, uh, that doesn't sound like linguiça, but it tastes nice. Uh, so here's the thing. So, so imagine, he's, he's using these sausages, right? So usually when you have a sausage, like the tips of the sausage are, are, are like tied together with a, a, a cord, right? Like a cord with like a metal strip clamping it together so that the, the filling doesn't come out of the sausage. Uh, traditionally that's how it works, so that you can then put it to smoke it. So those tips, those ends, are cut off, obviously, and they're usually used to flavor the sauce, which means the the better the ingredients that are on the the, the itself, the better the sauce will be as well. And the, this 
look very nice. Uh, Portuguese uh, fresh sausage is a very good sausage, actually, if you've never tried it. It's very meaty, very nice. The restaurant prepares at least 500 foundations every day before they start taking orders. Yep. 80% dos pedidos são de franquias. Of course. Os pedidos podem vender em média cerca de 1.200 franquias por dia. Yep. Beautiful. The grill looks like an industrial production line. And then having that egg beautifully placed on top. It's just magic. And it all happens in front of the customers. First, the foundations <coughs> are placed on the grill, followed by thin pieces of steak topped with slices of ham and cheese. That's another thing. If you don't use a good steak for the francinha, you fucked it all up. Because here's the thing. If you use a tough steak or a steak that, that has a lot of nerve, a lot of fat, like hard fat on it, what's going to happen is that as you cut it, uh, it's not going to cut properly because it's not, you know, uh, in, you know, it's not thin enough, and you're 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 going to destroy the fucking the fucking sandwich entirely. And then because it loses that form that it has, it just you kind of eh, lose appetite. So it needs to be a good steak as well, really good steak. Finally, a second slice of bread is put on top. Mm. The sauce, though. Now look at that. Sunny side up. At that's that's a well done for a singer right there. In cheese, Not gonna lie. It has a special semicircular cut to perfectly accommodate the egg. We don't usually do that. Uh, that's, uh, that's more a thing for them. Usually what people do is that they put the, the, the whole egg over it. Over the cheese. We don't put round things. But okay, sure. Yeah. At Cafe Santiago, the sauce recipe is a family secret. Gordita exactly. Pereira's mom. Every sauce. She personally prepares it. Every, every restaurant is on sauce, completely different from each other. It's the same in the three different locations. A blend of alcoholic beverages is the essence. Há uns anos atrás a francinha era uma coisa muito picante. E nós achamos yeah. que não, achamos que a francinha podia ser comida por todos e de todas as idades. E então tornamos o molho muito menos picante. <laughs> oh, so you created the sauce less spicy by putting booze on it. That's that's smart. I like I like your attitude, man. Uh, but yes, Francis Inga sauce has a lot of alcohol in it because that's th this sandwich screams Portugal. That's what it is. This group loved the sauce. They were worried about. I don't like the sauce thing. How many though. calories does it have? I'm curious to know it. Nunca fizemos esse cálculo, mas sabemos que a cidade de Porto é uma cidade que não é plana. Ah, the city of Porto is not flat. No, it isn't. It's very mountainous, that fucking city. And trust me, after you eat one of those, you're going to need to walk in Porto a lot. Uh, to, you know, you're going to feel like you did a horrible mistake, but a terribly great mistake at the same time. But then, usually uh, when you have the, the, you know, I don't know what you call it in English, the place that has the thing that has the sauce, we call it mulheira. Uh, so, Usually it doesn't look like that. That looked weird. This is what it looks like. Uh, not that. That looks more like a, a thermos or something. It is or nah. Quer subir e descer e qualquer pessoa pode comer uma francinha ao almoço, dar uma volta na cidade e estar pronta para comer uma francinha ao jantar. Bro, do you want to kill the fucking tourists? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Don't, don't, don't tell, don't do that. Do not eat a francinha at lunch. Walk around in Porto and think you're okay to eat a Francesinha at dinner. Do not fucking do that. That is a huge mistake. Don't do it. <laughs> Please. It was delicious. Amazing. Perfect. So then you go to the comments and they're as as beautiful as you as you <laughs> as you may think. How many calories does it have? Porto is not a flat city. Yes. Be funny, am I a joke to you? Yeah. So the technically the, the country's sandwich is the Bifana, which is this. Uh, that's technically the, the, the most iconic one, but I think Francesinha deserves it more. Also, I think Francesinha has won the award of the best sandwich on the planet at least twice, so... Tomato sauce, this kills me. It's beer sauce, dude. Well, it's technically not beer sauce either, but I, I see what you're going for there. We never calculated the calories, but Puerto is not a flat city. Oh, you thought you were talking about the bellies of the people. I mean, sure, the, some of them, yeah. 
Damn. Yeah, yeah, most people in Portugal don't know how many calories they, it has because when you eat it, you're definitely not going to think about how many calories it has, otherwise you're fucked. That. Just that. I don't even need to... I don't even need to say anything. Yeah, Portugal, we don't like to call it a sandwich. Most iconic sandwich. Yeah, thanks, mates. So it's technically... They're not wrong, though! It, that's the thing, we... You, we can dislike it being called a sandwich, but it is a sandwich. You have to admit, it is a sandwich. It just, it, it, it's a sandwich. What would you like, sir? I'll take the heart attack, please. Yes. Uh, if you do what that man said, and you go around Porto after a friend's thing at lunch, and then you have another one at dinner, you're very likely going to have a heart attack. No, as... Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that. Just don't. <laughs> like, it's just great. We've never dared calculate it. Yeah, nobody, nobody cares about calculating. It's a terrible idea, calculating the... It's just... Yeah, I, I love seeing that people are like... Saying how much they love it. It's just hard. It's just hard. It, it warms my heart. Imagine saying things like, it's the best little French lady in town. Man, I ate this little French lady. This little French lady is hot and juicy. Oh man, yeah, Nick. I don't know who you are, man. <laughs> but you're fucking spot on. If you, if you translate it to another language, it sounds very wrong. Okay, speaking as a local, Santiago is definitely not the locus, local's favorite to eat French singer, like I said. Uh, they will name a lot of different places, and Santiago is hardly ever mentioned, true. Uh, yeah, it's a, more of a tourist trap. Yeah, they took the spiciness off the dish, which basically is killing the dish. That's that's true as well. They just appeal to the, uh, the tourists that can't handle spiciness, because Portugal loves its spice. We really like spicy dishes, but our spicy dishes are different, because if you've ever been to Nando's, which is... Portuguese grilled food. Uh, obviously, that's not a best example because you can get literally everywhere in Portugal something better than that. But the the piri piri sauce that Portugal is famous for, like it's super spicy. Like it's not like challenge food level of spiciness, but it's it's spicy. But the way we do spiciness, it's that it's super spicy in the beginning, but then it dies off very quickly so that the flavor starts kicking in and you get the flavors. Because the spice is supposed to give you that kick, but not take away the flavors. That's how we like it. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys like this sandwich. This is my beautiful sandwich for my country. Hopefully you guys are willing to come here, who knows, maybe one day to try it. If you've ever been here and tried it, let me know what you thought. Uh, I wonder, because I saw a lot of comments. Please don't do that. Just don't. <laughs> Like, it's just great. We've never dared calculate it. Yeah, nobody nobody cares about calculating. It's a terrible idea, calculating the... It's just... Yeah, I, I love seeing that people are like... Saying how much they love it. It's just hard. It's just hard. It's, it warms my heart. Imagine saying things like, It's the best little French lady in town. Man, I ate this little French lady. This little French lady is hot and juicy. Oh man, yeah, Nick. I don't know who you are, man. <laughs> but you're fucking spot on. If you if you translate it to another language, it sounds very wrong. Okay, speaking as a local, Santiago is definitely not the locus, locals' favorite to eat French singer, like I said. Uh, they will name a lot of different places, and Santiago is hardly ever mentioned. True. Uh, yeah, it's uh, more of a tourist trap. Yeah, they took the spiciness off the dish, which basically is killing the dish. That's that's true as well. They just appeal to the uh, the tourists that can't handle spiciness because Portugal loves its spice. We really like spicy dishes, but our spicy dishes are different because if you've ever been to Nando's, which is Portuguese grilled food, uh, obviously that's not a best example because you can get literally everywhere in Portugal something better than that. But the the piri piri sauce that Portugal is famous for. 
like it's super spicy like it's not like challenge food level of spiciness but it's it's spicy but the way we do spiciness it's that it's super spicy in the beginning but then it dies off very quickly so that the flavor starts kicking in and you get the flavors because the spice is supposed to give you that kick but not take away the flavors that's how we like it so yeah uh, hopefully you guys like this sandwich this my beautiful sandwich for my country Hopefully you guys are willing to come here, who knows, maybe one day to try it. If you've ever been here and tried it, let me know what you thought. Uh, I wonder, because I saw a lot of comments also saying how much they uh, they wanted to come here just to try and that's just like, ah, you should, you should. But, uh, but uh, make a diet before that, I advise it. So yeah, different video, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and share it to a friend, really helps out a lot. And uh, comment on what you'd like to see next. Goodbye guys.